Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from Texas, Mr. Gonzalez, is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Many people talk about the southern border. Uh, I represent it. I represent, there's 1,254 miles in Texas. I represent two-thirds of that. Uh, Mr. Ramirez, I, I've been on your ranch. I almost didn't recognize you without your hat. I swear you would sleep with that thing. Um, thank you for being here today. And we've seen it. We've had the discussion firsthand. Uh, Ms. Tambunga, you look, you look wonderful. It's great to, to see you up here. Mr. Tambunga, you look wonderful as well. Thank you for, for coming up here and sharing your story. There is not one person in my district, and honestly, uh, throughout Texas, that doesn't have a story in some form or fashion, that isn't connected in some form or fashion to a tragic situation. Um, whether that's the high-speed chase that went through Ozona, uh, whether that's a high-speed chase that went through Uvalde and, uh, and, and wrecked a, a car that hurt the, the mother of one of my commissioners in Valverde County, uh, whether that's Ronnie Dotson, who's a sheriff out in Brewster County that every week finds bodies uh, in his, in his, in his, uh, his jurisdiction, uh, whether it's ranchers in Dryden, Texas, that have had their water lines cut. I mean, there is not one person, uh, whether it's the schools in Uvalde, thankfully we're in break right now, but that we're going into lockdown three times a week. And so I find it very frustrating to how do we get attention to this issue? It seems as if uh, the federal government, to include Congress. Congress has an equal role and is equally responsible. The President of the United States and Congress have abandoned my district, have abandoned the 23rd District of Texas. How do we fix that? And, and to me, all roads go back to the President of the United States. No matter how I skin it, no matter how you look at it, it's the President of the United States that's gonna have to enforce the laws that are on, on the books. But it's Congress's job to be the power of the purse and give them tools to, uh, to do that and, and update these very ancient laws that no longer make sense. Uh, but I'm frustrated. What, what, what do we have to do? How many people have to die? How many people have to drown? How many uh, uh, ranchers have to lose their property? How many schools have to go into lockdown uh, before something, some action takes place? And I'm very offended because a year ago, I hosted the President of the United States in my district, in Uvalde. And I pulled him aside and I said, Mr. President, now is it the time or the place, but I'd like to sit with you and talk to you about the border and some solutions on how we can fix this. The man looked me right in the eye and he said, absolutely, Tony. A year later, the only discussion I've had was, is with a staffer. And round and round we go. And it's unacceptable. Um, I, I don't know what it's gonna take in order to get the President of the United States to engage on this topic. Uh, I, I, was, I was against impeaching President Trump. Um, I, I view impeachment as a, a case of emergency, break glass. But are we at that point where this is an emergency? One. Two, is there something that Congress can do to move the ball forward? Is there even sm something small? Is there something Congress, not Republicans, not Democrats, can come together and do one thing in order to get this, this crisis under control? Uh, Ms. Tambunga, you brought up, you brought up uh, uh, a piece of legislation that we're working on, the Emmy Coke uh, Act, which essentially creates a, a, an awareness. If there is a high-speed chase coming through town, you get notified on your, on your phone to basically stay the hell away, get away. That, that may save lives. Are there some immigration things? Are there some work visa options that can get us to a point? Uh, how do we enforce the laws that are already on the books how do we prevent bad actors from entering this country? But also, how do we uh, abide by the laws that we already have? I think there's, a, there's an opportunity there, but it's going to take some bold leadership. And I think it's going to start in, in, in this committee and others like it. And if we don't, round and round we go. We're going to find more bodies. There's going to be more innocent Americans hurt. And uh, it's just a very, it feels like we're at a dead end. But it's going to be Congress that solves that. And that should scare the hell out of everybody. But if Congress doesn't solve it, how is anyone else going to solve it? So thank you. Thank you for coming here today. Uh, thank you for, for giving your testimony earlier. This is an important issue that won't go away because of folks like you. And Mr. Chairman, with that, I yield back. The gentleman yields. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Garcia, for five minutes for question.
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also want to thank all of our witnesses um, that are here today. Thank you for your testimony. Um, and certainly anyone that's been impacted uh, personally in their family um, or have had loss, I just want to send my condolences as well. I think it's... Uh,